Picture someone you love. I mean, truly love. Think of someone that you would do anything for. Someone that you would trust with your life. Maybe it's your mom or your brother or your best friend. But whoever it is, keep that person in mind. Now, picture someone you don't like so much. Someone you could live without. Maybe someone who has betrayed your trust or hurt you in some big way. Maybe it's an old friend. But again, whoever it is, keep them in mind. If one year ago you had asked me who the first person was in my life, I would have had an answer. And as of right now, that same person is my answer to the second question. The person that I thought would be a great friend to me all my life eventually turned out to be someone that hardly ever crosses my mind. Today, I'm going to talk to you about who he was, why that relationship ended, and how I'm a better person now because of it. But first, a little about me. My name's Leo. I'm 15, and like most kids my age, my free time is usually dedicated to one of three things: Netflix, Instagram, or sleep. Important hobbies, I know. Also, like most high schoolers, it's difficult for me to envision exactly what my future will look like. Do I want to go to college? What career field do I want to pursue? How will I support myself financially? Honestly, I don't have the answers to any of those big questions. In fact, there's really only one important area of my life where I feel like I know the direction I'm heading, and that's in my friendships. I believe that friendship is one of the only universal human experiences, but it seems to me that we don't focus on our friendships as much as we should. I speak from experience when I say that I'm happier when all of my relationships, friendships included, are thriving. I want to encourage as many people as possible to be intentional in their friendships, both when it comes to nurturing positive ones and identifying harmful ones before they get out of control. So, out of respect for him and his privacy, I'm going to be referring to my old friend as Alex today. I met Alex on the first day of school in sixth grade. We sat next to each other in math, and like that, we were friends. He was gregarious, funny, and smart. His personality was magnetic. Over time, my friend group and Alex's friend group began to merge into one. The more time we spent together, the more memories we made, the more inside jokes we'd recite, the more our lives became intertwined. Things were great. I began to really trust him. I would open up to him about things that I was too afraid to tell anyone else, and there were many times when he really felt like my only friend. I was fortunate enough to have found the answer to my first question. It wasn't until a little over three years into our friendship that I began to see red flags. When Alex was upset about something going on in his own life, often something that I had nothing to do with, he would take his anger out on me. If he felt insecure, he'd make sure that I did too. Unfortunately, I think all of us have dealt with someone like this at some point in our lives. I put up with his behavior for a while, trying my best to ignore it at first. I thought maybe he was having a bad day. Until days turn into weeks, and weeks into months. Every once in a while, I would talk to Alex about my issues with his behavior. He would apologize, and we would be on good terms for a few days, and then he would fall right back into his bad habits. His words began to lose their credibility, and I could no longer accept his apologies as sincere. That's when I realized that it was unlikely my situation was going to improve anytime soon. I figured that if I wanted Alex to stop tearing me down, I had to cut ties with him, so that's what I did. Believe me when I say that it was a lot harder said than done. Alex was involved in nearly every area of my life, so by cutting him off, it felt like I was losing a part of myself too. But ultimately, Alex was causing me more harm than good. I could not be friends with him any longer and still feel good about myself. I figured that if I wanted to be happy, I had to let Alex go, and like that. Alex, the person I had trusted, the person who was the answer to my first question, was suddenly someone that I didn't like to be around. You see, one of our greatest strengths as humans is also one of our weakest. We feel the need to build connections to other people, but we'll hold on to those bonds for as long as we can, even if it's not healthy. We care too much about ourselves for our own good, and never stop to think about how much easier it is to accept the decisions of the people we like over the people we don't like. We fail to realize how biased we truly are. If you can remember the people I had you picture at the beginning of this talk, put yourselves in this simulation with them. You're me, and the person you love is Alex. 
Can you truly say that you would act with your best interest in mind? Or would you cater to your loved one? When you replace Alex with someone you're iffy about, the decision becomes so clear. I would encourage you to examine that dynamic in all of your relationships through this lens. Friendship is a two-way street where both parties get what they need. If one or both people are continually dissatisfied, can it really be called a friendship at all? Look at things objectively and decide what will be best for you. Ultimately, no friendship is worth being mistreated. Thank you.